Hello, science explorers. Today, we're diving into the amazing world of plant cells. Get ready to explore the tiny, powerful building blocks of life. By the end of this video, you'll know all about the plant cell structures and how they work together to keep plants thriving. Plus, we'll have some fun questions as we go along. So stay tuned. First, let's talk about what makes up a cell. All living things, including plants, are made up of cells. These tiny units are like mini factories, each with its own job. So, what exactly is in a plant cell? Let's find out. Here's our plant cell. It might look simple, but there's a lot happening inside. Let's break it down organelle by organelle. We'll start with the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid permeable layer that surrounds the cell membrane. It gives the cell structure and support, just like a skeleton does for our bodies. Question time. Why do you think the cell wall is important for plant cells? Right, it helps the plant stand tall and protects it from external harm. Next up, the cell membrane. This layer protects the cytoplasm from the outside environment. It's like a security guard controlling what goes in and out of the cell. Question time. What might the cell membrane let into the cell? Nutrients and water, exactly. Inside the cell membrane, we have cytoplasm. This jelly-like material fills the cell and holds everything in place. Imagine it as a cushion that keeps all the organelles safe and snug. Now, let's meet the nucleus. This is the control center of the cell, containing the chromosomes. It's like the brain of the cell, directing all the activities. Question time. Can you guess what important molecule is stored in the nucleus? That's right, DNA. Moving on to the mitochondria. These log-shaped organelles use oxygen to produce energy. Think of them as the powerhouses of the cell, fueling all its activities. Question time. What activities might need energy in a plant cell? Growth and repair, exactly. Chloroplasts are where photosynthesis happens. These organelles contain chlorophyll, which captures sunlight to make food for the plant. They're like the cell's solar panels. 
What do plants need for photosynthesis? Sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Right. The vacuole is a storage area within the cytoplasm, often holding water. It's like a reservoir, helping the cell stay hydrated and maintain its shape. Next, we have the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. This network of membranes transports substances within the cell. It's like a delivery system, moving proteins and other materials where they're needed. Lastly, the Golgi bodies. These stacked membranes are responsible for packaging proteins. Think of them as the cell's post office, preparing and sending out important packages. Let's recap. Plant cells have a cell wall, cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, vacuole, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi bodies. Each organelle has a unique job that helps the cell function as a whole system. Now, let's see what you remember about plant cells. Can you name three organelles and their functions? Great job! You're on your way to becoming a cell expert. Let's compare and contrast plant cells and animal cells. Animal cells and plant cells share many organelles, but there are some key differences. Both have a cell membrane, nucleus, mitochondria, cytoplasm, vacuole, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi bodies. However, plant cells have a cell wall and chloroplasts, which animal cells don't. Before we wrap up, here's your exit ticket. Write down one thing you learned about plant cells today and how it helps the plant. Share it with your teacher or classmate. Thanks for exploring plant cells with us. See you next time. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more exciting science videos. At Twinkle, we help those who teach. Check us out at www.twinkle.com.